Magnesium has over 600 different functions within your body, with most of those being within your nervous system. It is such a vital mineral, and yet so many of us in the West tend to be deficient in it. If you are deficient in magnesium, then some of the most common symptoms you may experience may be things like muscle cramps or weakness, you may get muscle tightness, you may get problems with your sleep or mental health issues. In this video, I'm gonna show you the top eight health benefits that you can get from increasing magnesium within your diet and make sure you stick to the end to find out which form may be best for you. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume. I'm a chiropractor based in Dicot, and this video we're gonna be looking at magnesium because magnesium is so vital for our bodies and yet we're so deficient. Now to begin with, when you're taking any mineral or any vitamin, you ideally wanna get it in its most natural state, so in our food. So if you can increase the foods that naturally have this mineral in, that's gonna be the ideal. However, when it comes to magnesium, often it can be quite hard to get the necessary amounts in your diet alone. But also, if you're trying to find out whether the symptoms that you're getting are due to the magnesium deficiency, it's usually best to at least start off by taking the supplement. And at the end, I'm gonna show you uh, the type of supplement I, I can recommend for you. So foods that are high in magnesium include a variety of seeds. So pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and chia seeds naturally are very high in magnesium. We've then got nuts such as peanuts, cashews, and almonds. They are also very high in magnesium. And then a lot of leafy green vegetables as well as dark chocolate. If you want to see my video on dark chocolate and the health benefits of dark chocolate, you can check that one out here. Now the recommended daily intake for magnesium, is just over 400 milligrams for men and just over 300 milligrams for women. That doesn't necessarily mean if you're taking the supplement, you need to take the full whack of that. You ideally actually wanna take just less because you are gonna get a lot of the magnesium within your diet. So starting off with the first health benefit for magnesium, number one, it improves athletic performance. Magnesium is incredibly vital for the sugar to be transported to your muscles, to fuel your muscles so then you can perform. It also is important for reducing the amount of lactate that occurs when we go through anaerobic respiration and that gives us that muscle fatigue. So if you're lacking in magnesium, you're going to then have less performance. It also is very essential for muscle function. It enables your muscles to uh, stay at the right tension, so not get too tight, not get too weak and it also avoids muscle cramps. So if you're somebody that suffers with muscle cramps, one of the first minerals that I suggest to take would be magnesium, just because it is so common for us to be deficient in it, and is a very common reason why you may get cramps. So do try that one. Number two, magnesium improves sleep. This is one of the most common uh, things that I hear that people say that they get improvements on after taking magnesium. Um, is that they, they sleep better the night of taking it. The reason why is because there are a variety of neurotransmitters that uh, are required for sleep and magnesium is required for those neurotransmitters. So if you're deficient in it, it's gonna screw with that whole mechanism and make it harder for you to sleep. Also, there is a study that showed that those that were low in magnesium, it took 17 minutes longer on average for them to get to sleep. So basically, it showed that it can take you a little bit longer to get to sleep if you are deficient in magnesium, but as well, you can have less quality of sleep. So if you're suffering with sleep, give magnesium a try. And number three, magnesium is great for combating mental health, particularly depression and anxiety. As I mentioned previously, magnesium has so many functions within the nervous system. If you have low levels of magnesium, then your nervous system is not gonna be working as well. And we know that depression and anxiety is based within the nervous system, within the brain. So if you're not giving your brain the best chance by giving it the tools it needs, you're gonna be more vulnerable to developing depression and anxiety. There is a lot of research also back in this showing that low levels of magnesium are associated more with mental health in comparison to high levels. Number four, magnesium can reduce diabetes. 
Magnesium is essential for regulating your blood sugar and improving your insulin sensitivity. So if you're low in magnesium, then it's not gonna regulate your blood sugar so well, which is gonna make you a lot more vulnerable to diabetes. And number five, magnesium can improve your cardiovascular health. There are so many functions within the cardiovascular system that rely upon magnesium for. And so if you're deficient in it, you're gonna be more likely to develop things like high blood pressure, and you're also gonna be more likely to develop strokes. And number six, magnesium can lower your inflammatory response within your system. There have been links between low levels of magnesium in your body and high levels of the inflammatory markers within your blood, which shows there's an inflammatory process going on in your body higher than it should be. So if you're deficient in magnesium, you're gonna be more likely to suffer with inflammatory types of issues within the body. Number seven, magnesium can help improve migraines. This is one of the minerals that I go to very quickly when treating migraines because there is a strong correlation between those that suffer with migraines and low levels of magnesium. And quite often by supplementing the magnesium can improve the symptoms in, in migraine people um, in a lot of the cases. There's one study that showed magnesium being more effective than one of the common migraine medications, dexamethasone, um, in treating or relieving migraines. So if you are suffering with migraines, it is completely worth trying to take this mineral to see whether it has an impact on you. And lastly, number eight, magnesium is very essential for bone health. Around 50 to 60% of the magnesium stored within your body is stored within your bones. And it's very essential for the integrity and the health of your bones. So if you are deficient in it, you are more likely to develop things like osteopenia and osteoporosis. So particularly as you get older, you need to ensure that you are and getting enough levels of magnesium just for that reason alone. So how can you tell whether you're actually deficient in magnesium? Well, the first thing will be to look at your symptoms. If you're developing any of the issues that I've discussed, then it's possible that you are deficient in magnesium. Now, of course, there are loads of things that can cause all of these symptoms. So it can be a little bit difficult to know whether it is that or not. So what I would always suggest to people is to take a bottle of magnesium to the recommended amount that usually lasts around a month or two. And then by the end, see whether it's having any impact on you and on your health and whether it's actually improved those symptoms. If it has, there's a very good chance that you were deficient in magnesium and therefore it'd be good for you to continue taking the supplement or just trying to improve or increase uh, the amount of magnesium you're getting naturally within your diet. It'd probably be good to do both. If you get to the end and there's no difference, then you can probably rule out that magnesium wasn't the problem with that particular symptom. And therefore it might actually not be worth you continuing to take that supplement. Now, as discussed at the beginning, there are a whole variety of forms of magnesium and it can be hard to know which one you should buy. You've got lots of different forms such as citrate and oxide, glycinate, theonate, taurate, and a whole bunch of others. There is one that I'm going to suggest, particularly for the types of people that I see, and I see the types of people where uh, they've got musculoskeletal issues or issues within the nervous system, headaches, uh, muscle issues, and that's gonna be magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate has been shown to be more effective for treating the more muscular components of things, as well as issues within the nervous system. Also, the glycinate form doesn't make you susceptible to developing diarrhea like the citrate version can. If you take too much of the citrate, it can actually give you a bit of diarrhea, which actually makes citrate good if you're uh, suffering with constipation because it can move things down there a little bit easier. But if you're not suffering with, with constipation, then I would advise probably not taking that one and stick more towards the glycinate. So hopefully that gives you a nice idea on magnesium and the types of foods that you can get in and also the types of symptoms that you can develop if you're deficient in it. Hopefully you understand the importance of it. And if you think that you may be deficient in magnesium, then just go get a bottle and, and try it. And I would suggest generally trying the glycinate to begin with but I will put a link below this video that goes through a number of the different symptoms and which magnesium is often really good for that particular symptom. But if you're not sure, just get the glycinate and give it a go. 
Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, then please do hit that subscribe button below and give this video a like, and I will see you on my next video. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.